Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECFDF extended model for today's second video. So uh, we're going through the next six weeks worth of data with the ECM extended uh, forecast model. And I shall go to talk about for you very shortly. Just say that the first video released today was our nice little 7am upload. Having a look at the weather for the next uh, two or three days in detail. We've got Jeremy Friday coming up and a 10 to 14 day as well. It's a busy day as well as on a Friday uh, to gas weather. So keep checking back to the channel for all of the... Uh, uh, videos or the content and uh, make sure you like share and subscribe on uh, the channel thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that and a big thank you to ecmw.int for supplying the charts of course right so you have a look at week one uh mean sea level pressure anomaly uh, here we go it's going to take us from uh monday the 19th to monday the 26th of april uh so next week is going to be dominated by high pressure again have plenty of high pressure sitting across northern and western parts of uh, Europe as well. So this high pressure is obviously going to be bringing a lot of dry and fine weather with it. The 500 millibar height only from the North Pole view down uh, looks like that. Again, plenty of high pressure uh, through the north and the west of uh, Europe. So uh, next week is going to be dominated by anti-cyclonic conditions. Not necessarily all that mild, though. Actually hints at being a little bit cooler than average across uh, more eastern parts of the country. That's particularly because the North Sea is quite cold, of course, after a chilly winter. Most parts of Europe looking very cold as well, you'll notice. Uh, out to our north and west, it is a little bit milder there. Uh, generally, the temperature is just very close to average. Uh, of course, with high pressure dominating, uh, week 1, uh, 19th, 26th of April, is going to be a drier... Uh, week as well. Right, that's week one done. Let's have a look at week two. This is going to take from the 26th of April to the 3rd of May. A uh, bit of a change. Uh, high pressure now is moving more towards Iceland and Greenland. Again, that's been a very common occurrence over the past few months, of course. That will start to bring in more of an east northeast. We've got lower pressure to our south. I suppose that lower pressure might be starting to threaten some uh, wetter weather in towards more southern areas. I think the high pressure is probably still keeping things mainly settled, but uh, definitely a change in the position of that high pressure as we get through to the very end of April and into the beginning of May. Uh, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly. So uh, again, we see the high pressure becoming centered to our north, northwest, lower pressure down here. And so in come those east uh, or northeasterly winds. The temperature anomaly for uh, week two, from 26th of April to the uh, 3rd of May, more or less colder than average uh, again, going below average once more. Again, that's been a very common occurrence over the past few uh, weeks and months, of course. Um, and the precipitation anomaly, let's have a look at that. So still largely on the dry of an average side, but not as strongly dry as it is in week one. So it could be some showery uh, conditions around, but generally uh, generally still high pressure dominating, uh, so, so keeping things largely uh, dry. Right, go through the week three, which is going to be the third through to the 10th of May. Uh, signal's becoming very weak now. So uh, we've got some higher pressure around Italy and the Balkans and the Adriatic. Lower pressure in the Atlantic. Otherwise, not really much else to be, to be going on. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height. I mean, that looks a little bit confused as well. So there's an area of high pressure down towards Spain or above average heights down towards Spain. Again, otherwise, not, not really much else to, to go with there. Uh, week three temperature anomaly is rather weak as, as well. So this is rather a mysterious week here as we're going uh, through the first full week of May. Quite mysterious. Overall, probably a little bit on the cool side, maybe, um, but not much of a signal. And the precipitation anomaly for week three is also very weak as well. So that is a very mysterious uh, week. Let's have a look at week four, which is going to be the temporary to the 17th of May. Again, really weak signals here. We have got some lower pressure now up towards Greenland and Iceland, which might be bringing in a little bit more of a westerly flow. But, but of course, there's going to be some high pressure somewhere. So if we've got a ridge, say, through here, then we might actually be reasonably settled. Let's see if a 500 millibar height anomaly offers any, uh, any further... Uh, clues. So uh, again, lower pressure, below average heights towards Greenland and Iceland, higher pressure down towards Spain and Portugal, probably with like a flat westerly sort of flow. 
Uh, week four temperature anomaly uh, looks like that. So, I mean, it's very, very, very mysterious weeks three and four. Again, sort of average type temperatures, uh, really not much of a signal. Precipitation, I would assume, going to be very similar. Again, not really much of a signal. Could just be hinting to get maybe starting to go a little bit wetter, uh, a little bit more unsettled, perhaps, there. Uh, week 5, 17th to the 24th of May. Uh, again, not much to go with. I am struggling with this uh, week's update, I have to say. Low pressure in the Norwegian Sea and a little bit to the south of Ireland. Uh, so this might, it might be turning more unsettled as we go in. Uh, further on into May. The 500 millibar height anomaly offers absolutely nothing whatsoever. Uh, that's useful. The temperature anomaly doesn't really offer a great deal either. It does look as though it's uh, mild of an average like to our south south. So hot, hot through southern France and Spain, cool to the north of Scotland. Uh, and the uh, precipitation anomaly for week five, uh, again, real struggle, just just uh, very weak signals. And then we'll finish up week six, which is going to be the 24th of May to the 31st, last day of, uh, of May. And again, you've guessed it, all of that white indicating that there is no signal uh, at all. Uh, whatsoever. The 500 millibar height only shows no particular signal, although, interestingly, it does bring back some blocking around Greenland. So, <laughs> that's not a particularly good sign as, as you go into summer, really. Uh, but, but again, very weak signals. Uh, week 6, temperature anomaly. Um, again, just hints at probably being a little bit on the cool side, if anything. Certainly no sign of anything particularly hot coming up is there uh, with this. And uh, week six, precipitation, uh, again, really, really weak signals once more. So it is all very mysterious from around. We've got, like, signals for weeks one and two, and then after that, basically, there's no signals for weeks three, four, five, and six. So quite what's going on with this May, I'm not sure. Um, but there we go. You know, uh, that's what Mol is showing today. And we can only go by what Mol output is showing. So if there isn't a signal, then that in itself is quite interesting. But you would lose a signal as, as early as like uh, week three. Normally, normally you lose a signal the further out you go. So weeks five and six, yes, you normally do have quite weak signals there. But weeks sort of three, four. Uh, will usually have a, a rather stronger signal. So, so that in itself is quite interesting, but the model is struggling after weeks one and two. Um, there's definitely no sign of anything particularly sustained in terms of warm, hot, dry uh, weather, though, it has to be said. And, and it's all looking rather, um, you know, rather mixed, potentially, I think, uh, as we're going uh, through May. But beyond that, we can't really say uh, a great deal more. Right, so that's it for this week's ECMWF uh, uh, 42 day forecast. It's really just a two week forecast, I have to say, but never mind. Uh, that's it for this week. We'll be back later on with JMA Friday. We'll see if there's any, uh, you know, any stronger signals with the Japanese and CFS models uh, for the next four weeks. And uh, they'll have a 10 to 14 day coming up for you uh, later on this afternoon, which will include all of the regular features, obviously. Uh, for this week's ECMWF six weeks forecast, so that's all for now, and thanks for watching.